Lurking in the back end of Netflix, between your recommended dose of a Gretzko and all things fate, sits a show that has, for the most part, flown under the radar. Rulakuma and Kaoru is every part as interesting as the aforementioned shows, but there's no screeching swords or screaming pandas. Instead, the story is a simple one, about an everyday office worker living her daily life with two bears and a bird. Okay, well, the latter might seem a tad unusual, but that's all to the show's benefit. Because Kaoru could be anyone. In fact, she could be us. And it's that very notion that makes this series more appealing to Western audiences than, say, Rulakuma, a mascot bear for the San X company, who hasn't quite made as big a splash across the pond as he has in his own country. Yet, it doesn't really matter. Because in 13 short episodes spanning 12 minutes apiece, that relaxed bear and his friends Korlakuma and Kiratori settle themselves comfortably with a near memory. And the time we share with them feels as warm as well. A bear hug. And it can be just as crushing as one too. Life doesn't always go to plan. And it's that idea that threads throughout the narrative of this wonderful show, giving us the high points and the low ones of what living is like day to day, told at a pace that is as relaxed as the show's namesake. It's here, in this unassuming, cosy series, that we truly learn the bare necessities of life. Rulakuma and Kaoru is a show deeply concerned with simple, down-to-earth, day-to-day problems. We connect with Kaoru because her existence is a never-ending gauntlet of questions on how exactly to live as her life transitions to something more grown-up and altogether more complicated. Why are all my friends drifting apart? How do I start an adult relationship? Am I working to live or living to work? Do aliens like dried squid? That last one aside, Karu is the anchor of the show. Through her, we see our own neuroses and self-doubt. We have to do something! Uh, 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 not this! Uh, uh, uh. Have I truly become an adult? When is everyone going to realise I'm still just a kid who hasn't quite mastered how to fake it? And seriously, do aliens like dried squid? Rulakuma on the other hand, is the yin to Kaoru's yang. Whilst she's a bundle of indecisive nerves who cares far too much about how others perceive her, Rulakuma is chilled out, confident and content to live in his own skin, of which he has many. His name literally translates to relax bear, and episode to episode he lives up to it. Throughout the show's run, Kaoru finds herself looking to Rulakuma and finding answers in his easygoing life. A surprising angle, considering the studio who made it. They worked tirelessly for two years bringing these bears to beautiful stop-motion life. And yet the product is something that speaks to the value of relaxing, not worrying about the little things, and never, ever choosing between takoyaki and edamame. Everything feels so much colder in the winter. The world begins to lose its vibrance, lost to dark nights and damp days, where taking a step outside the front door feels like a chore. That mood hangs thick over Kaoru, as she trudges her way through snow-laden episodes the tonal shift feels in stark contrast to the previous seasons. Sometimes you just want to forgo all responsibilities and cuddle up underneath the kotatsu. Life isn't all apples and satsumas. Well, you get the idea. But it's the way that idea is planted within the show that makes the winter season just a little easier to bear. 
It cuts through the melancholy of Kaoru's world, spitting fever-level dream situations within her day-to-day -day struggles, which is funny considering her roommates are already ludicrous enough. But no matter how amusing it may be, there is a sadness to her life. And as the episodes played out, it became apparent to me that Kaoru was unable to see what was in front of her, even if it stands in a bright shirt playing the ukulele. Often, I think, we'll wish for things that we don't have. We crave aspects of our lives that we believe to be missing and forget to cherish the good things around us. Or rather, we don't notice that they're there until they're gone. Or until we look back. Kaoru is as guilty of this as we are, which makes the progress of living, the progress through the seasons and the progress of the show all the more interesting. Because the world can either feel as dark as the winter, or as fresh as fallen snow. I suppose it's up to you to find the balance in that. In that thing we call life. This is what Relakama and Kaoru does so well, making you want to peek out of that kotatsu and gaze up to a brand new world and face the day to a brand new beat. Right, Relakama? Nothing gold can stay. This is ultimately what Rilakkuma and Kaoru has to say. It's the fleeting nature of beauty that makes it beautiful to begin with. It's the shortness of life that makes it so vibrant. It's the small size of the dango that makes it so sweet. Rilakkuma and Kaoru isn't a traditional seasonal show, and yet it deals exclusively in seasons. In the highs and lows of any given year, and the ebb and flow of our feelings throughout. At just 12 minutes per episode over its tiny core, the show itself is fleeting, there just for a moment, and it's vital to lending the run that ephemeral beauty it trades in. Judging by how long it took to make, and how little a splash it seems to have made, it may indeed be the only season we get, doubling down on that transient nature. In the months since I first blasted through Rilakkuma and Karu, I've thought about it endlessly, revisited it on a number of occasions when I was feeling low, and have grown to love every episode for a wholly different reason. It really is a special animation, not just for how beautiful it looks and sounds, but how reassuring it feels. Life moves on, spring rolls around again and ushers in fresh starts and terrifying, exciting changes. Life can often feel hectic, and uncontrollable and altogether too much, but it's at these moments it's more important than ever to wrap up with something warm and escape, with aliens and dancing snowmen and ghostly girls with a grudge. It's comforting to remember that everyone struggles with this thing called life, but it's even more important to turn to our favourite bear, and remember to just relax. Hey, it's been a little while. I hope that you're well and that you enjoyed this video that Joe and I worked together on. If this is your first time experiencing the gorgeous lilt of his voice, then you can hear more by visiting his channel, where we talk about Relakama and Kaoru again. But we uh, flip the script a bit. He's amazing and his videos are a must watch for me the moment they come out, so to work on something together is a proper honour. I'm glad it was this show though, and if you do have a chance, please do check it out on Netflix. Lastly, thank you to Disco Bible for his fantastic cover of Sample, a song that I will never get out of my head. And to you for watching. It's more appreciated than you will ever know. But for now, I hope you have a relakama kind of day. And <laughs> don't sweat over the little things, alright? Catch you next time.